Arts, Lifestyle, SNS Online. Israel, which is surrounded by what it sees as hostile neighbors, has become an expert in border security, or put more simply, building walls and fences. What's your name? Omar Nasir. How old are you, Omar? 30. Do you know why you're here? Yes. Tell me why. I entered Jerusalem. I entered Jerusalem illegally. They are saved. At least 25 Palestinians have died, and hundreds have been injured during protests on the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel. The American Embassy. Yes, the American Embassy. What about you? I went there to protest the illegality of no, the... No, 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 no. Don't give me this UN bullshit. Say it with me. I threw rocks. I threw rocks. I threw rocks to the intention of harming Israeli citizens. Say it! They were protesting the opening of the United States' new embassy in Jerusalem due to take place in an hour. President Trump's controversial... Decision. Yes! I broke the rules! I broke the rules! I climbed over that fucking wall like I was Spider-Man! You need to take this seriously. You're going to be tried in a military court. Some protesters here are calling for a march to Jerusalem. Hello and welcome to SNS Online. Ali and Dahlia is a remarkable piece of modern theatre with Israel acting as a tangled backdrop to a simple and beautiful love story. Named by Country and Townhouse magazine as one of the top five political dramas now playing in the UK's capital city, the play, directed by multiple award winner Kerry Kyriakos Michael, MBE, is debuting at the Pleasance Theatre in North London and running until April the 14th. A story of love, sacrifice and redemption, Ali and Dahlia explore the loss of innocence, the longing for a time that no longer exists, and the political forces that shape our lives. SNS Online caught up with the show's cast for a pre-performance chat, as well as playwright Tariq Jordan. Ali and Dahlia was inspired by my travels through Israel and Palestine in 2014, and also through my own background, as I have a Russian Jewish mother and an Iraqi Muslim father, and I wanted to explore the relationship between two young children who meet during the construction of the West Bank Wall in in the early 2000s and I wanted to see the struggles that these two children would go through to keep this relationship alive over many years. And obviously it's based on quite a personal story, do you want to sort of get into that a little bit? Oh, so the story, I mean the story itself is, is fictional but it's inspired by a lot of my, I guess my own background in terms of growing up in with two different cultural backgrounds really, Iraqi Muslim, Russian Jewish, and looking at the similarities between between the two, while also looking at the situation in Palestine and Israel, and the struggles that these two children would go through. But there was a particular time when you were detained yourself, wasn't there? Yeah, so when I arrived in Tel Aviv, I was held and questioned for around 12 hours overnight and what it came down to was this idea that this individual didn't see me as Jewish because my mother had married a Muslim and for me I wanted to really explore that to see where that type of where those views come from essentially. Apparently the officer in, in, in charge was couldn't quite believe that your parents could be united like that. No, he, to him it was something that was was vile. He could not accept it. He was he was rather disgusted by it. And rather than me fight aggression with aggression, I I just held my ground. But then afterwards, when I eventually was released, I thought, okay, maybe now's the time to start exploring this because it, I've grown up with these two different cultures. And I thought now's the time to really see if I can place them in 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 a story. And, and in the world of the play, and of course you've got this wall that divides these two people, and walls don't unify any people, they just segregate. So yeah, I really wanted to look at that and see how this relationship can survive, if it can survive, and it follows, Ali and Dali, it follows their lives over a 15 year period. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. 
There were some comical moments, and even as a writer, I, I thought to myself, I don't think I would have been able to make this up if I tried. So my phone was taken off me, and it was searched, and he was going through all my contacts, he was saying, what religion is this person, who is this person, where do you know this person from, and it just went on and on for, you know, for this, this was for about two hours, and then he, he eventually turned my phone around, he, he had hold of it, he had it unlocked, and he said, you've been lying to me all along, you've been lying to me, and I, I said, no, I haven't, and he said, no, you have, because I found something suspicious in your phone, and when someone says that, you start to believe them, because you're like, you know, your, your paranoia gets to you. Yeah. And he turned my phone around, and there was a contact on the screen called Lebanese Ali. And I'm like, that, well, you've put that in my phone. I don't know who that is. It doesn't even make sense. And he said, no, who is this? Tell me now. And it got quite heated. He was waving my passport in my face, saying he's going to get rid of it, destroy it. And to be honest, the first thing on my mind was, please don't destroy it, because my travel insurance doesn't cover that. But it does cover loss, so maybe just lose it. But... He turned the contact around and it said Lebanese Alley and I did remember who it was and it was my local kebab house from when I was at university. <laughs> I love it. That is hilarious. So it, I guess he didn't believe you. He did, No, he didn't believe me. I, just, I told him to call it and I gave him the regular order that I normally order when I, was, when I used to go there. But ultimately, it's just the kind of the craziness of it all that, I mean... You know, what did he find out about me during those 12 hours? And I have a Jewish mother, Muslim father, and I quite like kebabs. I mean, it's that crazy. It's that crazy. And it goes on a lot. People get held and detained when they go through Tel Aviv. And it's become normality. And it shouldn't do. And a lot of people I speak to, they said, yeah, but it happens a lot. Well, that's not justification no. for anything like that. I mean, were you quite fearful that you would be detained for a long time or even violence might happen to you? Did anything happen to you out of that? I mean, there was no, there was no violence, but it was more the, the, the verbal abuse and the mental abuse, really, because ultimately he was insulting my mother for her choice in partner. And a lot of people get detained and then sent back. Now, that didn't happen to me. I was released the next morning. And it was just a simple, here's your passport, you can go. And you thought, you kind of think to yourself, well, what was all that for, if not to just spread fear? I was just thinking about this when I was travelling here to today, um, about the whole Israel situation that frankly terrifies me, not just because of what has happened, but the fact that people are so um, uh, polarising in their opinions on, on social media. And for somebody like me who just knows the basics, I, I'm really scared to get into it. I actually had to take somebody off Facebook who, I can't remember which angle he was on it, but he was appalled that I wrote something which was just, it was literally a link to an article. It's like who... Who fires the first shot? And, and, and any time anybody dies, those families are affected. So that causes extra on one side and the other side. I mean, what's your take on it? Is there any resolution at all? I guess, I mean, what happens is you do find that when you talk to people, they want you to pick a side, mm. so to speak. And I always just say, the suffering of human beings is something that just should not happen. And whether that be young children growing up in Gaza, surrounded by airstrikes, or young children who are just on the outskirts who face Hamas rockets uh, and uh, warning sirens. Ultimately, when we see the, the destruction of our, our, our youth, we have to stop it. And our world leaders could do a lot more. They could do much, much more than they're doing. I feel we do spend a lot of time talking, but there never seems to be any action. No one wants to see another human being hurt. We're not hardwired to think that way. And a lot of that behavior is taught. And really, it's about getting down to the basics of, you know, people should not be living under military occupations. People should not feel fearful when they are trying to support their families and just do what any other human being wants to do, which is just feel a sense of community and a sense of belonging.
So Wach, tell us who you play. Uh, I play Ali in Ali and Dahlia, and I play the um, Palestinian man. I'm, I play him from the age of 14 to 30, and he's in love with uh, Dahlia, and you meet him at three different parts of his life, and uh, in the most unexpected of places. I just thought it was, it was so powerful. I mean, you guys were making me cry, making me laugh. I love the fact you were playing 14, and then you were playing yeah. as this big butch guy and, and all the rest of it. And we didn't approach it politically, which I uh, quite enjoyed. And um, no, it was really fun, organic, mm. seamless. Mm. Um, I love rehearsals, and it, this was like any other. It was just amazing. It just seemed like um, you know, there's no winners or losers in, in this sort of conflict. It's all about human beings and the fact that you've got a true love story coming through that. Yes, yeah, exactly what you said, yeah. Um, it's, it's a love story, really. Mm. And it's a love story between, uh, with boundaries, and there's a literal wall separating them, and it's, uh, it's beautiful. So Dahlia is the female Israeli character in the play, um, and we meet her first. Um, she's a lawyer. Um, but the play kind of charts her and Ali's relationship back from when they were uh, around uh, 14 and goes all the way up till they're 30. How did you get involved in the production? Well, um, I saw it uh, being posted as, a, as an audition and I was like, this looks great, I really want to be involved in this. They were looking for Hebrew speakers and I speak a little bit of Hebrew, so yeah, I um, got my agent to get me an audition. <laughs> I'm playing Asher, who is Dahlia's younger brother, and we watch him go through the process of um, military camp and becoming a soldier and what he has to do on a daily basis. I can't give any spoilers away, can I? No. no. I will, I will, well, I mean, you don't want to totally ruin the end, but I mean, no. you know, any hints? Any hints. So, so he, I think, brings the family conflict into play more. He brings those lines to life. He's just going through the motions of, of what he has to do, and he brings, he brings his home life into their relationship. The audience reactions have been great and on Twitter and everything people seem to be responding really well and um, find it very compelling so it's great for us. Walls, walls eventually get into the psyche, you know they're a physical barrier, they're meant to separate people and when young children grow up seeing a wall then it, it gets ingrained in their psyche this idea of segregation and just you know, I do hope one day that West Bank wall is knocked down, but it does take many, many more years to get rid of the psyche of these two people have been separated by a physical barrier for many, many years now. And that's the, that's the effect of something like that. Any wall, you know, and there are, you're right, there are other walls that are being built right now. And all it does, it just causes a fracture in human beings interacting with each other. Mm and feeling a part of a community. Mm. You know, in that region, we have a long history of relationships between Arabs and Jews, and unfortunately, with the creation of borders and walls, what we get is we get people being split up mm. when they shouldn't have been. Israeli troops then fired warning shots, and after these were ignored, they shot at their legs. Palestinians claim the people were a group of farmers who were trying to retrieve parts from the wreckage of an Israeli jeep. I guess when it comes to the idea of Arabs and Jews, I wanted to, the idea of them living together, there seems to be this narrative that they they are always divided and this comes from us seeing on the news constantly the physical barriers and also the act of aggression that's constantly taking place and I had to look at my own background and look at how the similarities between these two cultures was was always a part was always something that I was very proud of and 
If I'm honest, I don't really feel that the, the situation out there comes down to religion or culture necessarily. All it comes down to is geography and the maps and borders and land grabs. And until we start taking responsibility for that, then only then can we move forward. So Reese, what did you think of the show tonight? It was an incredible piece of theatre. Um, genuinely, uh, I was just blown away. It was uh, such a re relevant topic. Um, and the cast were incredible. The script is just so impressive, uh, so unbiased, really. Um, and I would recommend it to anybody who wants to be informed about these issues because it's quite accurate. Uh, I thought it was amazing. I think given that we, you, me and, and him visited the West Bank and Israel last year, it was... This is your son. Yeah, this is my son. Hello. <laughs> uh, it was interesting because we met couples that were both, you know, Israeli and Arabs falling in love and every time it's a different immersion once you look at the story because each story is different yet the occupation and the trouble is the same the circumstances are the same and yet love flourishes in these kind of circumstances so I guess that's why I enjoyed again getting in touch with this sense of a good plant growing inside such a miserable place because oh, yeah. let's face it it's sacred land holy but yeah it's occupied and it's complex. I mean that's what struck me that it was such a beautiful and, and sometimes a very funny and yeah. sweet love story yeah. but with the backdrop of, of the, uh, the issues. Yes, yes, yeah, so I think that's, that's what was the shared feeling. What did you think? What do you think of it? So I thought it was really cool. I, my mum already said this but it was really amazing and yeah, I've read, I also, my mum got me a book about, is it, about Palestine and all the things that happened in it and one of the things that it was about was the Israeli-Palestinian couples and how and the conflict and how they were rejected. And this was really great and it was fun. It had a lot of humour in it. Yes, and it did, didn't it? Yeah. But at the same time, it also had a lot of sweet love, but also the ending was quite bitter. <laughs> So come and see this play because it's fundamentally a love story between two people who are divided by a physical barrier and the struggles that they go through is quite profound. We have three amazing actors in this production. We have Waj Ali, Deli Segal and Kai Spellman who are bringing this small studio space all the way in Islington, the Pleasant Theatre, to life every night and that is worth seeing.